So, the chorus was conceived as an idea in 1963. It started off with a bit of banter in the local pub, the Beehive Inn, uh, between Lewis Hartley, Amos Clapham and Reggie Sedgwick. Yeah, great, great granddad was one of the sort of the, the, the founders of the race. Him along with uh, a couple others. W one of the fellas in the pub w was a coal man. And uh, one lad walked in, slapped this other fella on back. And he said, uh, quite heartily, you look tired. Or words to that effect, shall we say. And I don't know what it was, whether it was a slap on the back or whether it was, you know, just didn't take to the banter or whether he was tired. The lad says, I'm as fit as thee, you know, in broad Yorkshire accent. And he says, well, We'll see about that then. Get a sack of coil, coal, on, on the back, and uh, I'll race you to the top at wood. Fred Hurst, who was the secretary, I believe, said, hang on, lads, we're looking to do something, uh, you know, Easter Monday to sort of supplement the Maypole procession. This could, you could be onto something here. And, uh, and there was born, you know, Gawthorpe World Coal Carrying Championships. So the coal race, it's a 50 kilogram bag of coal to be carried by men, 20 kilogram bags of coal by women and it's an uphill course you carry the coal on your back over your shoulders it's a crushing weight that pushes you down it's very hard to breathe it's the toughest four minutes of your life it is absolutely horrendous and it all builds up with the lactic acid pumping through your body and it just you just you just waiting to black out it's not it's not nice the only way i describe it is like a bed of nails but a weighted bed of nails like you've just laid down on it, it crushes all your chest, all your esophagus. So you've constantly got like your spine muscles are pulling, your leg muscles are pulling, you're struggling to get a breath in, you don't know where it's going to be comfortable, it all digs into your back and your spine, and your neck and your head. Like dropping a ton weight on your back because you're nervous. You're a little bit nervous, a bit tight, and it's just like. Communities like this, they thrive on events. They've been waiting for something like this after all the COVID where we've been in lockdown. So it's just wonderful to see so many people out in the village enjoying this traditional community event. The reason we're doing the race is in memory of our lovely friend Jared who sadly lost his life last year. We're feeling kind of ready. We, we think the morale will carry us through. It's a huge event, isn't it? Yeah, it brings everyone together. And it's really yeah. exciting as well to see everyone like doing it together. Yeah, it's a, a really nice community event and it's it's like a big part of the calendar for golf, aren't really? Yeah. Everyone comes together, it's, it's great. So how do you feel? Unwell. Exhausted. Really, really. Very very proud. Proud. Yeah, exhausted, very proud. but really, really proud. It's the hill, it's that big hill near the school, the killer hill. It takes some yeah, out of your desire. Hard. Really, really hard, but pushed through. We did it. <laughs> we've got people from Lithuania, Australia, Canada. We've got we've got a competitor from America this year. You know, it's it's absolutely phenomenal. It's it's mind blowing, really. Yeah. All right. It's one of the best days of the year. It is one of the best days of the year. It's like it's like Christmas Day for the village. This is a really unique event. You know, you it's really tough. It's not easy. You're coming through the village, and then you hit the crowd and the barriers, and they really give you that that spur on to cross the finish line when your legs are feeling like jelly, when your back's hurting, when your neck's hurting. It's their voices, their cheers that get you to that finish line. <laughs> I'd say it's a very bizarre tradition, uh, but it's very Yorkshire. Cheer everybody on from the first to the last and it's just great to get together and enjoy something in the village. I came all the way from New York City to take part today. I am exhausted. <laughs> it was such a great time. Uh, feeling the crowd is a turning point in there because you've just passed a couple of really tough hills and suddenly everyone's cheering for you and yeah, number 10 and really just wants you to finish it and is there with you and it's really exciting. If you are thinking of competing and you're not sure, you should 100% do it. It's such a great feeling. You feel so accomplished because it's so hard, but it goes over quick and everyone's cheering for you. 
Yeah, uh, I'm running the shift with my granddad because I volunteered with him for a lot of years on the wagon. Like, we used to load the coal onto the runners' backs and stuff, and last, we lost him in last March. He uh, died of an heart attack. And when it came around the ship, a lot of my family going, do you want to volunteer this year? Do you want to take his place? And I thought, no. Instead of doing that, like I will volunteer just every every other year after, but what I will do first is I'd like to run it. I made a, a promise years and years and years ago that I'd run the race. So it, when it came to it, I thought, right, if I'm just gonna, I'm not just gonna run it. I'm gonna do it for charity. As we talk now, about seven, eight hundred pounds towards uh, British Art Foundation. You can hear the people. You can hear all those people really cheering you, and it gives you extra, extra power. Extra power, did me. I watched my daddy in the race, and it was really, really brilliant. I was really proud, and it was, it was really like nice to see him doing something.